Information is given about a polynomial function f of x whose coefficients are real numbers. We are tasked to find the remaining zeros of this function. So we're told that this function is a third degree polynomial. Uh, given that it's a third degree polynomial, we know that it should have three roots, right, or three zeros. Uh, and we're told two zeros. We're given a real zero here and we're given a complex imaginary zero. Now, if you remember back to the last video, we know that all complex imaginary zeros come in conjugate pairs. So four plus i, its conjugate pair, is also going to be a zero. And we have our three zeros, and it's a th uh, third degree polynomial, so that's all of them. Uh, this was a pretty simple case for this one, but let's expand on this a little bit and use this idea to find all of the zeros of an actual polynomial function. So in this example, we are going to use the given zeros to find the remaining zeros of this polynomial function. So again, this is a third degree polynomial, so we're looking for three roots. We should have three roots in this one. Um, we're given one of our roots, 2i, and because this is an imaginary zero, we know that its uh, conjugate pair is also going to be a root or a zero. So if this is a positive 2i, we know that negative 2i is also going to be a zero. Now, if you recall back to when we talked about um, finding zeros of polynomial functions, we know that if we are given some zero r, some root r, that x minus r is a factor of that polynomial function. So we can start to write this polynomial function in factored form. Uh, using our given zeros. So we have x minus our first root, which is 2i, and then x minus our second root, which is negative 2i. Um, so these are going to be x, this is going to be x plus, x minus 2i and x plus 2i, and x plus 2i. Uh, now we can actually find part of a polynomial function if we FOIL this, and then we can do polynomial long division to find the remaining root. So let's do some multiplication here. So x times x, uh, that's x squared. x times 2i, that's a positive 2xi. Negative 2i times x, that's a negative 2xi. And then negative 2i times positive 2i is negative 2i squared. Oh, whoops, sorry, not negative 2, negative 4i squared. My mistake. Um, now, if we combine our like terms, we see that the positive 2xi and the negative 2xi cancel. Uh, if you recall back to the definition of imaginary numbers, we know that i is equal to the square root of negative 1. So if we square i i squared should be negative 1. So this piece right here, this piece right here, is really negative 4 times negative 1, which is positive 4. So this whole thing turns out to be x squared plus 4. So this is because this becomes a positive 4. So this is x squared plus 4. So now, we can find the last 0 or the last root or factor of this um, by doing some polynomial long division. So let's rewrite this and do long division here. So we have x cubed minus 4x squared plus 4x minus 16. And all of this is going to be divided by, all this is going to be divided by uh, this here, x squared plus 4. Okay, so what do I have to multiply x squared by to get x cubed? That would be x. So x times x squared, that's x cubed. x times 4 is plus 4x. And then remember, you are subtracting these, just like we would in normal long division. So subtract. So x cubed minus x cubed, those cancel to give us 0. Uh, 4x minus, because this negative gets distributed through, 4x minus 4x, that's again 0. And then we can bring down our other terms, so minus 4x squared, and then minus 16. 
So again, we ask ourselves, what do I multiply x squared by to get negative 4x squared? Well, we can multiply by negative 4. So negative 4 times x squared, that's negative 4x squared. Negative 4 times 4, that's negative 16. And again, we are going to subtract these. So we're subtracting here. So if we distribute the negative through, that's going to make this positive. So negative 4x squared and 4x squared cancel. Negative 16 and negative 16 cancel to give us 0, which gives us a remainder of 0. Um, so that means that x minus 4, this here, is our last factor for this polynomial function. Um, so if we were to write our polynomial function here in factored form, it would look like x minus 2i times x plus 2i times x minus 4. And we already know our zeros of negative 2i and 2i, um, of 2i and negative 2i from this part. So this is going to give us our last zero. And so our last zero is going to happen when we take this and set it equal to zero, x minus 4 equals zero. So we get that x equals 4 is our last zero. So all of our zeros in this are x equals negative 2i, x equals positive 2i, and x equals 4. So those are the zeros. These are the zeros of this polynomial function.